So this lecture is about the demand allocation model. Um, so this is an optimization model that we will first start by fixing locations. So that won't be a decision, um, but we'll add that later. So this is a model that we'll build upon um, in subsequent videos. And so what is the demand allocation problem? Formally, it is um, you have a given set of supply sources. So we have some level of source um, that have specified capacities. And we have a set of customers that have needs. They have specified demands. And our goal is to find the best allocation of supply to customers that minimizes costs. OK, so let's formulate this as an optimization model. So to do that, we have to think about what are the sets. Those are the collection of things. To think about what are the decision variables. In this uh, problem, it's about allocating uh, resources. Uh, what are the input parameters? Well, we have a set of supplies. We have known capacities. We have a set of customers with known demands. Those are things we do not get to change um, in our optimization model. Those are given. What is the objective function? That is our goal. And in here, it's to minimize cost. Um, of transportation and production, um, typically in demand allocation models. And then what are the constraints? Well, our constraints are we need to meet demand and we only have so much capacity to do so. So let's actually do that mathematically or more formally. So let's get started with uh, what are the sets. As a reminder, a set is just a collection of things. So as an example, um, the green dots are the market or the demand. So we just have a collection of those. Um, and the blue squares are potential facility locations. Um, and so we have those and the numbers inside represent some capacity. So in terms of sets, I'm gonna define big F as the set of facilities indexed on little i, um, and then big D be the set of markets. And so using set notation, the beauty of this is if I added a green dot or deleted a green dot, I don't have to do anything in terms of the formulation. The data would change, but the model formulation wouldn't. Um, in terms of the next step, which is to denote our input parameters, again, these are things that do not change um, in our model. And so what are we given? Uh, we are given information about the demand. So for each green dot, I need to know the demand for that market. Um, so it's how much units um, would be demanded. I also need to know how many green dots there are. Um, technically, that was actually already defined in the um, sets, but I'm going to put it here um, just to help. And then for every uh, square, which again is a facility, uh, we need to know the capacity of that facility. So for every square, I need to know how much can it handle. Um, and then we also want to know the number of facility locations, which again has actually been defined uh, in the sets, but I'm going to put it here. So again, the demand, D of J, and K of I are things that are given. We are not determining that in our model. The last uh, piece of um, input parameter is cost. And I put it here because that is an interaction between the location, the facility, and the demand point. And so typically, um, we would define something like CIJ, which is the cost of producing and shipping one unit from facility I to market J. Um, this can include many different things. It matters what your problem says. Um, so you could think about this as the cost to produce and ship. Maybe it's only the shipping cost. Maybe it also includes other things like the inventory cost, tariffs. Um, so this is really um, specific to the problem. But this is a piece of information you would know. And you would need to know this for every I and J. So you could think about this in a table. You would have all the different locations, all the different markets, and you need to fill in that uh, table. In terms of decisions, what do we get to decide? Um, here we get to decide just how much quantity is shipped from an open facility I to a demand market J. So in this uh, problem, we will call that uh, decision variable XIJ, which is the quantity shipped from facility I to market J. Um, and then how do we figure out how we should set XIJ? We need to set an objective function, which again answers the question, what is a good solution? So if I told you XIJ should be 50 and you tell me XIJ should be 30, the objective function says who wins? Who wins that argument? And we're going to um, see who wins that argument based on minimizing total cost. And so for the demand allocation problem, the total cost is how much do I ship? times what does it cost to ship each um, unit from I to J. 
So remember, CIJ is an input parameter that denotes the cost per unit to go from I to J. And then XIJ is how many. And so if I sum that up over both I and J, that would be my total cost of producing and shipping um, things in my network. So if we stop there and we just said, I want to minimize cost, the answer would be don't do anything. Make XIJ zero and say, I'm not going to ship or produce anything. Obviously, that doesn't represent a demand allocation. Uh, so we need constraints. And so in terms of constraints, what do we need? Um, well, first of all, we need to know that um, all, demand, um, all demand markets must be satisfied. So each market has some demand, and we need to make sure it's satisfied. We also need to make sure that we don't use more capacity than we have. So each facility only has a capacity of KI. And we, may, we can't ship non-negative things, so we have to make sure they're positive. So that's in words. Um, how would we do this in math? Um, so the three equations would be, the first one basically says, if I sum up over all my different facilities where stuff can come from, Xij, it has to equal the demand um, given. And so that is true for all J. So remember J, there is one uh, green circle, J, for every demand market. So there would be, M separate constraints all represented in that first um, constraint set one. The second constraint says, okay, that's great, uh, but I must have enough capacity to do that. So this one you'll note is for all I. So constraint set two says for I one to N. So there would be N separate constraints for um, constraints at two, and there is that many different facilities, and we're saying we can only ship uh, enough demand if we have the capacity to do so. And then the very last one just says all the XIJs have to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, and again, you would have a matrix of XIJ. Um, so you'd have I N times M variables uh, there. Okay, so that is our um, optimization formulation. Uh, just to denote this all together, we have sets, so we have a given set of facility locations, a given set of market or demand points. We are also know how much demand is coming from each of these markets, what is the capacity of each of these uh, facilities, and what is the cost of producing or shipping from a specific factory to a specific market, and those are all given. In terms of our decision variables, we're determining how much should I ship from one to the next. We are going to decide those decision variables in terms of the, the values that minimize the total cost of producing and shipping. So that's the sum of CIJ times XIJ over all I and all J. Um, and we have to do that. We're limited by three constraints. The first is that we need to meet all demand. So each of these demand locations has a fixed amount, and we need to make sure we meet that. We also need to meet capacity. Each of these facilities only has KI uh, units that they can fulfill and we can't ship non-negative values. So that is the demand allocation model. Um, and so my uh, kind of knowledge question for you here is what type of optimization model is the one we just formulated on slide 16 for the demand allocation model? Is that an integer linear programming uh, model, a linear programming model, a mixed integer programming model, or a non-linear programming model? So the correct answer is B. It's a linear programming model. So if I go back to here, the, the really important part is the decision variable. And the decision variable is continuous. There is no integer requirements here. And so we can also check the objective function is linear in terms of the constraints, the const or in terms of the decision variables, and the constraints only are a combination of linear um, variables. And so we have a strictly LP, a linear programming model. That is fantastic um, and great. So the correct answer here is LP, linear programming. That's because we can solve linear programming models really, really well. So if you take an operations research, you should remember the simplex model. Um, and so that's an extremely efficient way to solve LPs plus other advances um, in the world of optimization. So anytime you can, you want to have a linear programming model. So the correct answer is B um, and LP. We can also think of this problem in network form, and I'm just going to present this here um, in a network. So what are we doing? We are given sources, and we're given customers, and we're also given uh, basically this data in between. So we're given the cost on the arcs. That's the, the cost CIJ. 
We're also given the capacities of each of the sources and the demands of each of the customers. And so we can also think about this um, kind of from a network optimization perspective um, as well. So my next question for you, it says, given a set of suppliers, S in S, and a set of demand, D in D, let X, S, D denote the unit ship from S to D. So that's our decision variable, the unit ship from S to D. Then what does this constraint represent in words? So if you need some time, please pause the video, think about this. So the correct answer here is C. Um, the key thing is, is that we say at least 500. So this is, we need 500 or more. So there's a greater than or equal to. So that's where the at least 500, not at most. And then the other thing we have to see here is in total must be supplied to demand D. So each of these demand points need to have at least 500 units, but they can come from any supply source. So we get to sum over S uh, to meet that 500 units. So the correct answer is C. Okay. 